Hi chess fans, um, we're looking at the game between Nigel Short with White and a girl called Phyllis Osmanoja uh, with Black. She is a woman uh, international master from Germany, rated 2245. Um, she is in the top 350 women in the world, so um, certainly a very strong player, but of course Nigel Short is one of the strongest players in the world. Nigel opened with d4 and Phyllis responded knight f6 and after knight f3, d5, c4, e6, g3, bishop b4. We have a um, sort of Bogolyov um, Indian opening with g3, bishop d2, bishop e7 goes back. Um, it's actually not a Bogol Indian, it's a, it's a typical um, Catalan, bishop d2. Kerse, Kerse, um, the idea behind bishop before was that um, black wanted to provoke bishop to d2 because the bishop on d2 is arguably a bit worse than on c1. c6, queen b3, and b5. So Phyllis was thinking for almost 18 minutes here. And let's have a look at this move. Does black lose a pawn here? Okay, so it's a little trap. The point is that after white takes and black takes, white can of course not take with the queen because of bishop a6, pinning the queen against this pawn. After queen a4, for example, bishop takes, attacking the rook, rook e1 and bishop a6. Black would be, arguably, a little bit better or at least equal. So... In this position, however, Nigel, of course, saw bishop a6 and instead played rook c1, a waiting move. And this move also um, brings the rook into the game and so the rook is not um, attacked by the bishop anymore. So if, for example, black now played um, something like this, the queen still probably wouldn't want to take because of bishop takes. But already white is not losing a tempo because the rook has moved. Okay, in this position, um, Phyllis maybe made a little bit of a mistake because she was thinking about this bishop a6 idea for so long and it's a kind of mental bias that we kind of hold on to this idea and we lose a little flexibility um, thinking about other ideas. In this position, she played bishop a6 and there's not really any clear reason to do that. And indeed, after bishop b4, Nigel highlights that this pawn is not going anywhere and as a result this bishop here is really bad. The bishop is also hitting um, the bishop on b4, so black exchanged and the queen is now blocking this bishop in a bad square. Queen b6 with the idea of knight to c6, attacking the queen, chasing the queen away, but Nigel simply plays knight e5, the knight is very strong in this square and also prevents this plan of black. Now again, black really wants to hold on to this plan and plays knight f to d7 and Nigel is actually very happy to take this knight and let's have a look at this position. How do you evaluate this position? Right, this knight here on d7 is very bad. Um, it can maybe go to f6, but that takes another tempo. A lot of these other squares uh, are either not available or also not so good squares. So this knight is not so good and this bishop is also not so good. So black now has two bad pieces and white controls the, um, the, the c file. So black is already a little bit worse here. Game continued, um, e3. Uh, Nigel is planning to reroute the bishop um, and do some pressure here. Um, rook a c8, attempting to challenge white on the c file, but Nigel simply plays knight to d2, connecting the rooks. Knight b8, black is losing time, rerouting his bad pieces. That gives white valuable um, time and room for maneuvering. Nigel uses this time to improve the position of his bishop. Bishop to f1, starting to put pressure on the b5 pawn. This bishop is really bad because it also blocks um, a6, which will protect this uh, pawn. And after knight c6, finally attacking the queen, the queen simply goes to c5, 
offering an exchange of queens, queen b7, and queen a3. And what's the purpose behind queen a3? Can black not play b4 now? Well, of course, black cannot play b4 because now the power of the bishop becomes evident. The bishop would simply be hanging. So queen a3 is a good move that also really traps this bishop in. And let's have a look at this knight. Is it really better here? At the moment, it cannot jump here. It cannot jump here. It cannot jump here. So this knight is actually not so good on c6 either. Okay, the game continued queen b6, uh, at least trying to control the square, maybe for the knight, but knight just simply plays knight b3, making sure this knight on c6 is really bad. Game continued rook c7, rook c5, rook fc8, rook ac1, and both sides have doubled rooks, but again, how do you value this position? Well, white's pieces, knight and bishop, are much better than black's pieces, and this gives white a big edge in this position. Okay, after h6, h4, knight b8, and the exchange of all the rooks. Again, um, this is how a, grand, a, bi a big, um, a strong grandmaster plays this. You know, if those pieces are bad and my pieces are good, I'm happy to exchange. Even though, um, you know, there are less pieces on the board, I'm confident that these are better pieces, so I'm very happy to exchange. Especially because knight c5 even improves this position of this knight further, attacking the bishop um, and queen b6 protecting this bishop. So the queen and the knight are now tied up in the protection of the stupid bishop on a6. Okay, queen d3 improving pressure on this bishop. Um, and we will see the purpose of this move in a little bit, because after queen a4, a3, knight c6. Nigel is kind of sneaky here, because, um, you know, this pawn cannot move forward, because then all the pieces are hitting this bishop on a6, and he's just waiting for black to play knight c6. What, can, what else can black do? The knight has to move. But now, quick tactical question, how can white gain decisive advantage now. Okay, you might think, okay, simply take this bishop and then take this pawn, but actually a4 is even stronger. The point is the queen can of course not take because it's protected by the knight, and this pawn simply highlights the bad positioning of the pieces in all of white's pieces, the knight, the queen and the bishop coordinate against this weak b5. And Black in this position played bishop c8, and white simply takes this pawn, and white is now a very healthy pawn up, even still has the better pieces, so um, the engine even says it's worth two pawns, simply because black's pieces are bad, white is, has one a pawn, and is simply winning this position because black does not have any compensation or better pieces or anything. So the rest is really technique, and Knight e7, queen a3, offering exchange of queen. Black, of course, doesn't want that. Knight f4, pushing the queen a little bit. Queen c7, bringing the queen in. So the knight was also vacating the square for the queen. Queen d7, pushing the pawn forward and exchanging that pawn. Um, this knight is hitting the bishop and the queen. In this position, white could have exchanged, but white is happy where the pieces are playing bishop b5, controlling the square, and really making sure these knight, this knight and this bishop are going nowhere. Black's pieces are blocking each other. They're, this is excellent technique. Um, these pieces are very strong. Even though white is a pawn up and could just exchange, Nigel is really, um, is really having good technique, making sure black doesn't get any activity. King f8, queen d6, um, highlighting all the weaknesses in black's position, g6. Uh, queen d8 check, check um, queen g7, and now hitting the bishop. See how nice, um, how nice white's pieces coordinate here. The queen is protecting the knight, the knight is protecting the bishop. Um, bishop takes, knight takes. Uh, again, very nice, highlighting how badly coordinated black's pieces are. White is threatening to take the knight, knight has to move away, but now queen f8. You know, all of Black's pieces have been sidelined. The pawn, the extra pawn, didn't even move. You know, the position was lost even without the extra pawn because um, white is now mating. Black resigned here in view of 
king h7 knight f6 mate very very interesting um niger was really playing this very cool after this bishop a6 he simply played played it very cool highlighting the weaknesses of this position then in the final blow a4 where it all breaks together with a healthy pawn but then um, not just playing with this healthy pawn but as we have seen reaching this position where the pawn has not moved and white has simply um, cashed in on black's uncoordinated pieces so um, again Isle of Man tournament very interesting because you see very strong grandmasters playing against strong players but of course much weaker players and you can see some very good technique. I hope you liked that video and learned a little bit for your practical games and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.